please rise for the entrance of the bride. God is love, and those who abide in God abide in love, and God abides in them. To all of you who have joined us this afternoon, the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. You can have a seat. Friends, we have come together this afternoon in the presence of God for the marriage of Paul and Amanda to share their joy and to promise them our support and our love. Christian marriage is a joyful covenanting where two people proclaim before God and before human witnesses their commitment to live together in spiritual, physical, and material unity. In this covenant, they acknowledge that the great love that God has shown for each of them allows them and enables them to love each other. They affirm that God's gracious presence and abiding power are needed for them to keep their vows and to live in love, and to be faithful servants of Christ in the world. Human commitment is fragile, and human love is imperfect. But the promise of God is eternal, and the love of God can bring our love to perfection. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Eternal God, our Maker and Redeemer, by the presence of your Son and Spirit, bring joy to this day. Let the love we celebrate today be a sign of your eternal love. As we honor the union of a woman and man, draw us into unity with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Paul and Amanda, Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds the two of you together. As you've come together here so that in the presence of God and his children, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. And so I'm going to invite you to declare your intent and consent to join your lives together today. So, Paul, do you take Amanda to be your wife? Yes. If, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> Amanda, will you receive Paul in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and protect him? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And Amanda, do you take Paul as your husband? If so, please say, I do. I do. And Paul, will you receive Amanda in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her, as long as you both shall live. If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Now, for all of you who have joined us this afternoon, will all of you who have joined us and are witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold Paul and Amanda in their married life together? If so, please say, we will. We will. Glad to hear it. 
We are now going to take a moment to listen to the scriptures. Uh, we'll, we'll hear three selections from the scriptures, from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Gospel of Mark. And after I share with you each selection of scripture, I'll invite you, uh, as, as I affirm that this is the word of the Lord, to respond by saying thanks be to God. So the Old Testament reading for this afternoon will be from Song of Songs, chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. The writer of Song of Songs says this. They say, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of one's house, will be utterly scorned. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading this afternoon is from the book of Romans, chapter 12. God says to us this, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Outdo one another in showing honor. Love one another with mutual affection. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Persevere in suffering. And persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not think that you are wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10, in which Jesus teaches us, for since the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Take a moment to pray with me. Living God, we pray that you would make us hungry to learn in your word what your love makes you so ardent to teach us. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Paul, as your pastor and your friend for a good while now, I can say I cannot believe that this day has finally come. <laughs> uh, we have been waiting for this day for a long, long time. Uh, we've, done, we've done a fair bit of life together. We've traveled to other countries together. We've exchanged books with each other. We've saber rattled over theology together. You taught me how to smoke a pipe and I taught you how to mix a drink. And so we shaved probably a couple of years off of each other's <laughs> life expectancies. Uh, we have uh, celebrated together We've shared love and loss with each other. Uh, we've walked through both moments of real joy together and moments of real struggle together with each other. Uh, and, uh, and after all of this decade plus of life that we've shared with each other and that I've enjoyed with you as both your pastor and your friend, you, know, you around the heirs table are one of the family. Uh, it is not every person who ever sits down at our table that our kids give nicknames to. And so the time that you joined us for dinner and one of our sons decided that from that day on that you would be known in the heir's house as Mr. Nice Tight Pants Man, we knew that you were, that you were in, that you were, that you were one of the family. Uh, you, you really have become a, a member of the heir's ex extended family. And we're just so, so joyful for this day. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't had the opportunity to do as many years with you, Amanda, but I, I will say that immediately upon getting to know you, we've, we've just been struck by your, your wisdom and your warmth and intelligence and graciousness 
and compassion. I'll, I'll never forget after the first time the two of you came to spend an evening with us together. After you guys walked out the front door, Monica turned immediately and, and said to me, these two are going to get married, or at least they should get married. And then she said to me, Paul better not screw this up. <laughs> so we're glad that we all made it to today. Uh, you, uh, you, you obviously are just a great, great gift to Paul and to all the people that love you. And so even though we haven't lived as many years together as you, we're just so, so glad that, uh, that we get to share in this day together with you. Uh, there, were so, there, was a, uh, there was a time several years ago that Paul and a, and a former staff person at our church were teasing me that because Paul's been around Liberty Church for a while, he's heard a fair number of sermons from me. And Paul and this former staff person had teased me that they had, they had discovered the recipe to, to what a Jared Ayers sermon is. And they, they said that that includes you know, a base of whatever the Bible passages we're talking about usually a pour or two of something from either the Atlantic or the New Yorker, uh, some sprinkling of St. Augustine of Hippo or some obscure church figure from the deep past, and then some Jesus to top it all off. And so on this great day, I did not want to disappoint. So I'll tell you that when I was reading an issue of the New Yorker a little while ago, uh, I thought of you guys. Uh, several, several months ago, there's a journalist named Sean Lavery that was exploring the growing phenomenon of couples on the day that they begin their lives together, ra rather than doing the kinds of things that you're doing, just scripting their own ceremonies and promises and services, or simply doing away with, doing away with what we're doing today all in entirety. Uh, and he says, uh, he says this, many, many couples making a trip down the aisle now abandon all the traditional pablum, the ceremonies, the vows, and all those kinds of things. And when I read that, it was, it was hard in one way not to, not to sympathize. Many of, many of you, like us, you, you know what it is to live in a broken home or you have friends or family members whose marriages are something other than ideal and beautiful. And oftentimes, if we're honest, a lot of what we're doing today can feel a little bit archaic. It can feel a little bit old fashioned. And so when the two of you have such tremendous chemistry with each other, it's, it's right to ask, you know, why, why do all, why do all this stuff? Why make the promises that you're making? There is a, there's a British writer named G.K. Chesterton who, in, in one place in his writing, he notices that it is the instinct of lovers to want to make promises to each other. That there's something in us that, with the people that we love the most, we want to say, "I'll never leave you or forsake you. I will." always be there for you. I'll be there for you on a day like today when you look elegant and beautiful, Amanda, and as good as it's going to get, Paul, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll still be there for you on, on the days in which, you're, uh, in which you're less shined up, or on the days on which you're afraid, or at the end of your road. All of us want somebody to say to us, I will be there for you on your very best days, on the days that we're rejoicing, and celebrating, and I'm going to still be there on the worst days. I'm going to be there on the days of tears. I'm going to be there on the days of losses. I'm going to be there on the day when, when you brush with your own mortality. I'm going to still be there on those days as well, too. You see, the things that you're promising each other this afternoon, they don't, they don't predominantly express just your present feelings today. They are pledging your future fidelity to each other. These, these vows that you are about to make in just a moment are about making a future appointment with yourself. We, we know instinctually that the kind of love that the two of you are seeking, till death do us part love, that, that needs more than just chemistry to take root and grow and flourish. It needs, it needs a covenant. Uh, that's what the lover in, in, so, in the selection from Song of Songs that we heard a moment ago, that's what they're crying out for. The lover in Song of Songs is saying to their beloved, I want to be sealed on you. I want my life to be sealed to your life. Now, this is the kind of love that's stronger than death and that is more fierce than the grave itself. And Jesus teaches us that this is actually woven into the deep rhythm of how God shapes us. In the, in the teaching of Jesus that we heard together a moment ago, 
Jesus is quoting the early poetry that begins the book of Genesis, in which, in which God is pictured as making a human community and then joining a man and a woman in the very first wedding. And as they make promises to one another, their lives become one with each other. They become one socially, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and physically. They, they become both completely known and vulnerable to each other and completely embraced by each other. This is the kind of love that the two of you are called to give and receive to each other. Now, in one way, despite, Paul, your immense and obvious excitement, uh, <laughs> it, is right, it is right to have a little bit of fear and trembling as we stand here together. It would, uh, it's only human to, as you're about to make your wedding promises to each other, be saying to yourself, can I, can I really do this stuff? Can I do these things? And as somebody who is your pastor, your friend, and who has myself been married for 16 years, I want to tell the two of you, of course you can't do these things. You're going to promise to love and cherish and honor each other, and it will not be long before there'll be a moment where you annoy each other, where it's hard with each other. Uh, you're, you're going to promise your commitment to each other, and you will feel anything but at some point or another. You're about to promise till death do us part love to each other. My wife Monica and I made those same promises to each other. And after 16 years, I can assure you that there is more than one time that she's likely been tempted to be the cause of that death that would part us from each other. <laughs> of course you can't keep these promises. You're going to make promises to be faithful when of course you can't be faithful to each other. Uh, this is why in the promises that you made a few moments ago, what you said to each other was that you would, you would join yourselves to each other with God's help. You're promising to be faithful, and of course you can't. But this is the thing. You have a faithful God. You have a faithful God that can transform and heal and reshape you so that you can actually express the kind of love that you're vowing to each other this afternoon. And the faithful promise-keeping love of God in Jesus is what will enable you to grow that kind of flourishing, committed life of love together over your next decades of life. You see, it's the love of God in Jesus, in Jesus living and dying and rising, in which God says to each of you and to all of us and to the whole world, I am setting you as a seal on my heart. He demonstrates in Jesus' death and then in his resurrection that God's love for you and for us is actually stronger and fiercer than the grave itself. And if you root yourself in that love, it will heal you and enable you to in turn express that kind of love to each other. Now, I want you to know, I, I know that there's, there's numbers of us who are either here in person or tuning in online from anywhere in the world, really, uh, for whom you know, you're, you're here this afternoon to celebrate Paul and Amanda and not so much to listen to a Christian minister rattle on and on. And friends, that is, that is as it should be. But I would say as an aside, for, for those of you for whom you're, you're not connected to, to Christian faith and, and much of this has kind of been strange for you, I'd encourage you on, on this day when we gather to celebrate Paul and Amanda's love, I'd encourage you to, to use this opportunity to, to begin to really explore and take seriously the love of God for you in Jesus that their love is a signpost for. God tells us in the scriptures that, that the kind of dogged, committed, till death do us part love that a man and wife have for one another, now this is the clearest picture that we have to the kind of love that God has for us in Jesus Christ. So, Paul, love, honor, cherish, and bind yourself to Amanda. Now, rejoice with Amanda. Now, weep with Amanda. Love your wife as Christ has loved you. Amanda, now, let yourself be joined to Paul. Bless and honor Paul. Live in harmony with Paul. Be patient with Paul. Patience will be required for Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive Paul and live peaceably with him. Now, love your husband in the same way that Christ has loved you. So, beloved friends, let's make some promises. 
with God's help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul and Amanda, I'm going to invite you to join hands with each other. This way? Oh, okay. Another way. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. We practiced it yesterday. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to invite you one at a time to simply repeat after me. Paul, beginning with you. I, Paul, I, take Paul. you, Amanda, to be my wife. <laughs> I, great. Paul, <laughs> take you, Amanda, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As both as we both as both as we as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. To this covenant I pledge myself. To this covenant I pledge myself. Truly and with all my heart. Truly and with all my heart. Amanda, you can likewise repeat after me. I, Amanda, take you, Paul, to be my husband. I, Amanda, take you, Paul, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. To this covenant I pledge myself. To this covenant I pledge myself. Truly and with all my heart. Truly and with all my heart. Paul and Amanda, as a sign of the promises that they're making today, are exchanging rings with one another. So here are the rings. I'm going to pray, and then you'll exchange them with each other. Bless, O Lord, these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, to live always in mutual charity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul, I'm going to invite you to take the ring for Amanda and to place it on her finger and repeat after me. Amanda, receive this ring. Amanda, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just push it on there. There we you go. Got it. There it's we great. go. Nailed it. And Amanda, you can take the ring for Paul, and you can likewise repeat after me. Paul, receive this ring. Paul, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ooh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Got it. All right. Pray with me once more. <laughs> Almighty God, graciously pour out upon this husband and wife the spirit of your love. Make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined and no despair may come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. Paul and Amanda, you have made your covenant together before God and all of these witnesses here present by solemn vows and with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings. And so by the authority given to me as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that you are husband and wife in the name <laughs> of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Now, Paul and Amanda has, have chosen as their first act as husband and wife to share in the sacrament of communion together. Uh, they are uh, they're going to be doing this with bread and wine uh, that's behind us. And the elements for Holy Communion, uh, and the, as well as the vessels, have been made actually by, by good friends, which they wanted to do as it's a picture of their continual need for the community of their family and loved ones to walk with them as they enter into a married life together. So I'm going to invite you to join me as we come to the communion table now in prayer. Let's pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Holy Father, creator of all things. By your power and wisdom, you brought the universe into being and created us in your image. You made us male and female and gave us the freedom to be joined as husband and wife, united in body and heart. You called us to love and serve you, but when our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, whom you sent out of love for the world to be our Savior. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ was born as one of us, shared our joys and sorrows, and offered his life in perfect obedience and trust. By his death, Christ delivered us from our sins, reconciling us to you. Risen from the tomb, he gives us new and abundant life and offers healing for every human relationship. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your people in the joy of your eternal realm at the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same fashion, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant between me and you, which is in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Friends, these are God's gifts for God's people. Paul and Amanda will take a moment to commune now. We'd like to invite you to pray for them, simply to reflect on the music during this time, and then we'll come together in prayer to close the service. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All demand to behold the Lamb of God. Behold, he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are all who call to his supper. Lord, we are not, we are not, not worthy, worthy that you should we enter should into our roof, but only say, say the word, and our soul shall be healed. Amen. Paul, this is the body of Christ for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amanda, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ broken for you. Amen. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Alright, let me pray for you guys. Almighty God, I thank you for these beloved friends who you make one in marriage. I pray that you would give them grace to cultivate a life of love, which is a picture of the love that you have for us. I pray that their marriage will be a picture of the love that you have for all of us in the world through Jesus Christ. I pray that you will bless and keep them. Make your face shine on them. Be gracious to them. I pray that you lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right. Love you guys. Paul and Amanda, may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, enjoy true peace with everyone, and be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that others may know God's kindness through the two of you. Amen. And for all of you who've joined us this afternoon, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you both now and always. Amen. And now, the moment that you've been waiting for, Paul, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I get lipstick on you? I don't know. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce to you, for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Paul and Amanda Burkhart. <laughs> Here as the family shares a few last pictures with the